Our friends and welcome back to Stay Tonight. In this video, we will talk about what are React JS components. Yes, the functional component that we can create in React JS. In the last two three videos, I have talked about how you can create a basic React project. What is JSX, and you know various different small small concepts around what you get as part of the boilerplate code when you create a default React JS project. So if you have not seen those videos, I would strongly recommend you to please watch those three videos first and then come back to this video. In this video, I talk about how you can create components, what are components, what are props, how you can send props, how you can send data and functions from one component to another component and how it all works and come together. So let's get started. So as you can see on the screen, I already have a basic project set up which we did in the last couple of videos. If I have to show you the project structure, so I have the app.css file, JS file, index.js. In app.css, I don't have anything and I intend to keep it that way. So let's close this and get started with the component building. So like I've mentioned in the last videos as well, a functional component in React is nothing but a JavaScript function. So as you can see over here as well, this app, which is the main root component, it is just a function. And in JavaScript, there are different ways of writing functions. So this is the basic default way of writing a function. I can also change it if I want to. So for example, if I want to create it into an anonymous function, I can do it like this is equal to function. And it still says the same. So you can see the output is still the same. Now this function is an anonymous function. If I want, I can also use the arrow function style over here. So let's try that also. For that, you know, I'll be removing this function keyword and I'll just put in is equal to and this angle bracket over here. I save it. Still the output is same. Our application is successfully compiled. So it works. So this is nothing but a JavaScript function. So similarly, just like we have a function over here, we can also create other functions that acts as component and we can use that in our JSX code. So let's see how we can do that. So here I have created a basic student uh, object which has properties name and place and I'm using it in my JSX code. This is the return statement which you know uh, is returning the JSX code uh, from this main app component, right? So here we have used the student.name and student.place. Now, a better way would be for this, you know, what if I can, you know, take this away and take this entire code. So maybe, you know, I have to uh, print a list of students. And if I have to write, you know, for different students, for example, I have three students or four students. And for that, you know, I have to show data over here, like, you know, welcome Abhishek to start an application. Similarly, I want other welcome messages as well, along with the hometown messages. So how will I do that? One way would be, you would say, okay, you know, just, you know, just copy paste all this, right? save it and create uh, objects like you know student 1, student 2, student 3 etc right obviously we can do it that way as well or uh, you know just let me remove this first now instead of having this JSX code over here one thing that we can do is I can simply you know let's just put it over here and let's create another variable saying student JSX and I can also create the entire JSX over here as well so this is also something that I can do. And over here, what I can do is I can simply put in this student JSX. So, oh, we got an error. Why? Okay, so. We have this over here, this over here. All right, so we will need this and this in that. We will have this and now it will work. Yeah. So like I covered in the last video, everything should have just a single root element. So this over here is acting as a root element in which you know the entire JSX code is written. I can also have it like this div. Then also this div is acting like a root element and I have a single root element. So this works. So here also, you know, you if you have to return something, you have to have this. Uh, we have covered this in the last video. If you have not checked the last video, go and check that out. Now if I have to, you know, for example, use it multiple times, I can easily do that, right? You can see uh, multiple times it is getting printed, but the data is same. So again, if I have to make it work, I'll have to do a couple of things which I don't want to. Let's go the React way. So the React way is to create a component. Now, how can we create a component? So let's see. Uh, like I've mentioned, you know, a React component or a React function component is nothing but a JavaScript function. So let's see if I can simply create a function. For example, let's say student and uh, you know return 
a string from here, let's say Abhishek, can I use this in my code over here? No, I cannot, right? So this is not working, right? Obviously, you know, this is a function call and I cannot do it like this because I'm getting an error, right? Student is not a function. It's saying it is not a function, although it is a function, but it's saying it is not a function. All right, you know, I was just trying a few things out so that, you know, I can explain to you how your know, things reach where they are. So in React.js, what we do is, I'll just quickly remove this and we will have this student function. So when you have to create a component in React, uh, you can create multiple components in a single file as well. What you have to remember is that when you define a name for a component, it has to be a capital letter. So when I do this student, uh, it will act as a component. If I do this as, you know, student, the act will think, okay, this is a function that you are creating, not a component. So that's the difference that React understands. So we will create capital S using student because we want to create it as a component. And what I'll do is I'll just take this entire code from here and we will not have anything in our main app component and I have this in the students component. So now in the student function, what I have is I'm creating a student JSX, which I can then return, right? So this is how I can return it, just like we were doing it in the app.js function as well. So no worries, you know, if you don't want to create another JSX, let's just, you know, skip this and have this directly. So let's not make the code confusing. So what we have is we have a basic uh, object created over here and this. All right. So it makes sense. We are just returning a JSX code in which, you know, we are printing this welcome dot student.name and student.place and let's take this to our main component over here. So as you can see, I'm getting straight white app over here because my app component is getting loaded from the index.js and this particular is exporting the app component. But I have another component created over here, which is the student component. So how I can use it. So as we talked about, you know, when we have to use a component, this is the style that is allowed in JSX. So similarly, you know, let's try this for student as well. And let's save it. Boom. Yeah. So this works. So now what we have over here is this is a student component, right? So we are, we are successfully able to create a simple component with the name student. Again, for this as well, you know, this is the basic traditional style that I've used. You can also use the modern ones like we did for above app function. This is the anonymous style again, this will work or you can also use the arrow function way to create this. So I'm sharing this because, you know, if you search for any particular solution, if you're facing any problem and you find a code solution on internet, you know, there are different styles in which people create components. And as a beginner, I don't want you guys to get confused. So this is, you know, these are the different ways in which you can write functions in JavaScript. If you want to explore I learn more about all these things, I would recommend you to go learn about JavaScript functions because that is what is being used over here. Right, so we have created successfully a student component and that's how it looks. It is returning a JSX and we are able to use it over here. So if I have to use it a multiple times, I can use it a multiple times, right? So maybe for three students or for four students, I'm getting the same output over here. But yeah, the component is getting, uh, you know, used again and again. Now this is fine, but because the data is constant, this is not of much use, right? So there has to be some way using which I can send in some data. So for example, in functions, we have parameters and we can provide argument values to, you know, functions so that they can work using those arguments and produce different result every time we call them, if we are calling them using different arguments, right? So similarly in React.js also, this can be done. But in React.js, everything works in terms of objects, right? So props is nothing but a JS object. Props is the short for properties, right? And we can use this to send in data or functions. So if you know about JavaScript objects, you know that, okay, an object can have properties, which is nothing but data and it can also have methods of its own. So similarly, props can also have data, which is nothing but properties and functions or methods. And you can use props to, you know, send data from one component, component one to component two. 
and your component one is sending in some props to component two for component two is nothing but an object so we can use the dot operator style to access either data or methods that are available in the props so let's see how we can do this so as you can see over here we have used the student component three times now how do we send in the values to the student component so we can use the simple key value pair in form of attributes over here so if I put in like this name is equal to Abhishek and I put in place equal to Guru Gram and let's add one more let's say role number and that would be a number so a number would not be put in strings so we can also put in as a string but then it will go on as a string if you want to send in a number specifically then you cannot do this this will give error so because in JavaScript, if you know number is an object, so you can use curly brackets and you can provide in the values over there. So let's say 2253, any random number as a roll number. Now we have sent this, but we have not yet received uh, this value in our function component. So how do we do that? Just like in a normal JavaScript function, we have parameters. So we can define over here props. Now this props will get all these values as an object just like an object so for example this will be like this will get this value name uh colon abhishek comma place colon just like you know we have this over here gurugram whatever and roll number colon 2253 so this is the value that will come in this props when this particular gsx element is created right so let's see now because we know that this is just another object so we can remove this from here and I can use this over here and over here so that you know I have this uh, name key accessed from this props object and similarly for place using the dot operator if I save it as you can see this way is having Abhishek and Gurugram and these are blank because we are not sending in any values so these are coming in blank so let's quickly you know add values for these ones too let's say John and John is from New York. Roll number is 62, whatever. And we do it for, let's say, um, what should I name? Ron. And Ron is from Sydney. And if I save, I get this. Welcome John to start an application, hometown New York. Welcome Ron. Welcome Ron to start an application, hometown Sydney. So as you can see, now we are able to send in data to the functional component that we just created. So this is a functional component that we have created. And moving on step by step, this is so easy, right? You just imagine that this is a normal JavaScript function. Just like you create a JavaScript function, you're creating a component as well. Now you must be wondering that, okay, you know, in this uh, function or a uh, component, you know, we are returning JSX. It doesn't matter. You can also have a simple JavaScript function which doesn't return a JSX then also it will be treated as a component so let's quickly see that so constant let's say subject so we create another I'm just creating random you know meaningless objects so don't worry you know that I'll be doing something functional so I just return uh, let's say a CS subjects right so this I have created over here and if I have to use this over here so what I can do is I can do this subject and I save it. You can see CS subjects. Now, obviously, you know, this doesn't have any formatting because we have not used JSX over here. This is just returning something, uh, just returning a string. So this will act as a normal component. And because we have used the capital letter for the first uh, alphabet, so it acts as a component and we are calling it also as a component. So that's how components are created. Now, another important point about components is, so generally when we create a basic React project, the directory structure is a little uh, modular so we create each file for different components so for now i've shown you guys how you can create multiple components in single file as well we have created a component successfully now let's move it to a separate file so what i'll do is i'll just cut this from here and it is starting giving error which is fine i'll go to the file explorer and i'll create a new file and i'll name it subject oh no subject student.js and yeah, so we have a file over here and I copy paste this over here and I'll save it. Now when I've saved it, I the error is still there. Why? Because I've not imported this in my app.js file. This app.js file doesn't know that okay student.js file is there. So what I'll do is I'll import 
student from my student.js file and now also it is giving error can you guys think why it is still giving errors why no let me tell you so we have imported this over here but we have not yet exported or created this student.js as a module so what we have to do is i talked about this in the last class as well so i have to use export default and i'll mention and by default export the student function from over here and as soon as i do this as you can see the output is again successfully rendered the application compiled successfully and things are working fine so i have imported the student from the student.js in this student.js i have my new component student component which is taking props and in the props i'm sending in some data so i've not yet sent uh you know functions so we'll talk about that in the later classes uh if i have to do this like you know for example roll number let's say roll number so we also had this and i can also have a a basic hr to have a line so this is how it can look right site right app welcome this this uh, the, the. i've not used much i've just used a simple html or in jsx you can use html so knowing html is important then only you'll be able to write or create user interface using jsx so i've done you know simple processing props are treated as objects so you should you must know how javascript objects work how you can have properties and methods inside of javascript object then only you will be able to understand this super easily right this is not too complex to understand if you know what javascript is different concepts of javascript i have listed down all those concepts in the last video so do check that out so yeah that's pretty much about uh, writing a basic component in react js i hope you guys enjoyed this if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you have any confusion, if you have any doubts, please post your comments and I'll try to reply to all of those comments. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos for React.js. Although I'm trying to upload one video every day. So this month of August is React August month for me and I will try to cover every possible thing related to React.js in this particular month. We'll also create multiple projects. So the next video would be around how you can use CSS to maybe style whatever you are creating your user interfaces. Then we'll talk about how you can do event handling in React.js and then we'll create some mini application using whatever we have learned up until now and then we'll move on to the complex concepts in React.js. So stay tuned, keep watching and see you in the next video. Thank you so much.